Well, good morning. If you haven't seen the interview, Kamala Harris, Brett Baer interviews her, then you need to go watch it or enjoy watch it with me. And watch it a couple of times. The hypocrisy knows no bounds. <laughs> They're going to go over the even the opening question about the border. And it's amazing to me how she can dance and dance and dance. And look, even if you don't like Donald Trump, at least he answers the question. All she did in this interview... From my pea little brain, is blame Trump. You're going to blame Trump after you have been in office for three and a half years with the border a disaster, and you blame Trump. She keeps referring back to, well, we, we tried to pass a bill, but Trump called somebody. <laughs> Trump called somebody and said, hey, don't pass the bill. I mean, if they, Trump was building the wall. The wall was getting built. We did see a decline in the immigration influx. Biden takes over and just opens up the floodgates. We saw video of them cutting the wall and letting people in. We've seen across the country bus loads, plane loads of illegal aliens dumped in cities. Then they go dump some in front of what Pelosi or one of them one of them Democrats homes and what did they do? They called out the National Guard to come get them off away from them. God forbid it's in their backyard. I guess it's the elephant in the room. A lot of a lot of people don't talk about it with the subsidized housing and like a, a lot of the super wealthy. Do they want an apartment complex for subsidized housing built in their neighborhoods or on near their plantations? Yeah, I said plantations. Pelosi's got a vineyard. Do they want these kinds of things built near them? No, they don't. Again, a hypocrisy knows no bounds. It's always been the elephant in the room that nobody wants to address that they build these things because they go, oh, well, everybody deserves a good education. And it, and if they're in a better area, it's going to make it all better. And it doesn't. Because it doesn't address the core issue of broken homes, uneducated people. And, hey, we already know that the education system is a dumpster fire. They've been dumbing it down forever. People can't even read the Constitution. Young people can't because it's in cursive. It's, it all tie, ties around. Okay, It all just comes back to the circle of the hypocrisy. Where they dump these illegals into your backyard, but not into theirs. They use their they use taxpayers' money, not their own. It it's just it's just amazing to me that all of this is um, just ties around to the liberal Democrat policies. Look. Go look it up. Go do research. Find this stuff out for yourself. Now, in this interview, what does she do? She's blaming Trump. She filibusters on every question. She just starts doing a ramble word salad. And look, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but I see what's going on. Brett Baer did a good job. I think he could have even did better by like, oh, I'm, my time is limited. I can't let you ramble on for five minutes on one question. The first question out the gate is how many do you say has come into the off over the border illegally? She danced around the whole question. And then again, she blames Trump. 
And what's interesting and pay attention is that Brett Baer kept saying, your administration, yours and Biden's administration, this is your administration. Then he's asking her questions like, well, you keep saying you want to turn the page and you want to move forward. What does that mean? So she starts rambling on about something that's happened over a decade. And I'm like, what is going on? So you've been in office, this administration, for three and a half years, but you want to turn the page. And then he brings up a video of her asking another question about how she's going to move on in this administration. How does she feel like Biden... Does she feel like she, is there any policies or anything that she would do different than Biden did? And then she said nothing comes to mind. But she wants to turn the page. I, I don't understand it. I mean, I am trying and I am listening to her. I am listening to what she is saying. They didn't even touch the abortion issue. They, he didn't even ask her about why would y'all have an abortion van outside your DNC convention, which is mortifying. It is, to me, it's it's mortifying. It, 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 it really is. So, let's watch this together. Madam Vice President, thank you for the time. Thank you. It's good to be with you, Brett. You know, voters tell pollsters all over the country and here in Pennsylvania that immigration is one of the key issues that they're looking at this election, and specifically the influx of illegal immigrants from more than 150 countries. How many illegal immigrants would you estimate your administration has released into the country over the last three and a half years? Well, I'm glad you raised the issue of immigration because I agree with you. It is a, it is a uh, topic of discussion that people want to rightly have. And you know what I'm going to talk about. Yeah, but right do you, now, just a number. Is, do you but, think it's but, 1 million, 3 million? Brett, let's just get to the point. Okay, the point is that we have a broken immigration system that needs to be repaired. So your and, Homeland Security Secretary said that 85% well, no, of I'm not apprehensions. Finished. I'm not finished. We have a we have it's an a rough immigration estimate of system six million people have been released be, but, into the country. And let me just finish. I'll get to the question. I promise you. I was beginning to answer. And <laughs> when when you came into office, your administration immediately reversed a number of Trump border policies. Most significantly, the policy that required illegal immigrants to be detained through deportation, either in the U.S. or in Mexico. And you switched that policy. They were released from custody awaiting trial. So instead, included in those were a large number of single men, adult men, who went on to commit heinous crimes. So looking back, do you regret the decision to terminate Remain in Mexico at the beginning of your administration? At the beginning of our administration, within practically hours of taking the oath the first bill that we offered Congress before we worked on infrastructure, before the Inflation Reduction Act, before the Chips and Science Act, before, any, before the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act, the first bill, practically within hours of taking the oath, was a bill to fix our immigration system. Yes, ma'am. It was called and, the U.S. Citizen, and, Citizenship Act of 2021. Exactly. It was and, essentially and so, but, but a I, pathway I, to citizenship for the... Finish, yes, ma'am. May, may I finish responding, but please? Here, but, this, but you have to let me finish, You please. had the White House and the House and the Senate, I'm and they the didn't bring up that bill. I'm in the middle of responding to the point you're raising, okay. and I'd like to finish. She had the White House and the Senate. She, they had it all. They had it all. But after we did all of, before we did all of this, we were going to tackle the, the border? You did it. It's a dumpster fire. Man, Brett Bear did a good job coming back, back with that. And she's still dancing. She still hasn't answered the first question. How many do you think it is? Because it's on them. How could she dance around this? It's word salad, misleading, misdirection. Blame it on somebody else. 
There's no accountability here. Yes, ma'am. We recognized from day one that to the point of this being your first question, it is a priority for us as a nation and for the American people. And our focus has been on fixing a problem. And from day one, then, we have done a number of things, including to address our asylum system and put more resources, getting more judges, what we needed to do to tighten up penalties and increase penalties for illegal crossings, what we needed to do to deal with ports, points of entry between border entry points. That's the work we did, and we worked on supporting what was a bipartisan effort, including some of the most conservative members of the United States Congress, to actually strengthen the border. That border bill would have put 1,500 more border agents at the border, which is why I believe the Border Patrol agents supported the bill. It would have allowed us to stem the flow of fentanyl coming into the United States, which is a scourge affecting people of every background, every geographic location in our country, killing people. It would have allowed us to put more resources into prosecuting transnational criminal organizations, which I have done yes, as the attorney general, former attorney general of a border state. Madam Vice President, a couple prosecuted of Prosecuted trafficking of drugs, Six. guns, and human beings. And Six. Okay, so here, here's a couple of things that, that I have an issue with. The border is a national security for any nation, any country. Why do we need a bill passed by a bunch of uh, bozos to stop the flow? To stop terrorists, to stop drugs that infect our people, terrorists that are going to kill us, murderers. You don't need a bill. Y'all are in office. Send the military down there. Fix it. Why are we having this conversation? Why is there such a day? It drives me nuts that this could not be. Yeah, you can wave a wand. Go. Send the military. Send the National Guard. Finish the wall. Stop sending money to all these other countries and fix our own crap. It makes me angry that we have to have this dance around this stupid conversation. Well, Trump called somebody and stopped it. Stop the bill. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I am just a peon in America. But my peon little brain's like, well, this is a national security. You don't know who's coming across this border. Yeah, okay. There are some people who come over here and sneak in, and they, they're probably decent people who are escaping a hard life and want a better life. I understand that. But when you have millions coming across, you don't know who's coming in. Well, good Lord, we haven't even talked about immunization or them bringing in diseases, bringing in drugs, terrorists, murderers. Why not have the military down there? You don't need a bill to, to protect America. In fact, that's your job. That is your job to protect America. And our borders are broken. Why do you need a stupid bill? And then blame Trump because you claim he called people to not pass a stupid bill that came from the Libertar Democrats. Oh, the border people, they, yeah, they want us over there. Yeah, send the military. I keep saying it. Shut up. Oh, man. Six Donald Democrats, Trump, but let me just finish. Six and Democrats Donald voted Trump against that bill. learned about that bill and told them to kill it because he preferred to run on a problem instead of fixing a problem. And in this election, this is rightly a discussion that the American people want to have. And what they want 
are solutions, and they want a president of the United States who's not playing political games with the issue. I hear you. But actually is focused on fixing Six it. Six Democrats voted against that bill. I think this isn't a conspiracy theorist, what I'm fixing to say. They want them in here. She waved a wand, and when the, those people in Ohio uh, and and they're they're here on a visa, she made them. She gave them insta visas. The whole eating the dog and cat and pet thing. But those people aren't illegals. They're here. They're here legally because of Kamala Harris. Because of their administration, they shipped all those people over there to that poor town. And it's a dumpster fire. Because she did wave a wand. Now, are, can they go vote? No, they can't vote yet. Because they got to go through a process. That's why she's saying we need more judges. Because they want to fast track these people for to be uh, to vote for them. To keep them in power forever. You know, and they claim that, oh, when Donald Trump, which is... The most ridiculous thing I've ever heard, but some people believe it. Donald Trump's just going to get elected and become a dictator and never leave. It's it's ridiculous. It is absolutely ridiculous. They want they're the ones. The hypocrisy knows no bounds. They're the ones that want these this flood of immigrants. They want them here to vote for them. Give them all kinds of stuff and bribery. Give them phones, money, help them with businesses. Uh, damn, damn the regular American people. Because it's for votes, people. It's as simple as that. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. Why? Ask yourself, why is there a flood of illegals pouring across the border. Good God, and we had 9-11. Did we forget? Did we fall asleep again? Are we not concerned? Oh, they passed some stupid Patriot Bill Act to start just... And look what that did. Created uh, longer lines at the airport. Hell, I got searched one time traveling the security guard picked me out frisked me and then did some kind of test on my hands and my shoes and said i had bomb residue on them i was like what <coughs> i'm not making this up this is all about the patriot act so they inconvenienced us oh it, it they pulled me out of the line yeah, I look like a terrorist. But yet they didn't want to profile people. <laughs> this is all the left. They they are killing me. They are just killing me. They want these people here for, to vote for them. If you don't think that this is not destroying the country, then you go vote for her. You go vote for her. You people living in San Francisco, Baltimore, New York, Chicago, places in Georgia, y'all don't think, y'all think y'all city is all like this utopia. There is a utopia. In these cities run by liberal Democrats have been running them into the ground for decades. And she, what kills me is, is that she totes the fact that she was a prosecutor in, in California. We all know about that. She was keep, she was keeping, but locking up more people for no reason. Apparently because they're black. It would have allowed 1.8 million illegal immigrants into the country a year. A lot, a lot of conservatives had a problem with it. These are the six Democrats. But more importantly, back to the original premise, Jocelyn Nungary, Rachel Morin, Lakin Riley, they are young women 
who were brutally assaulted and killed by some of the men who were released at the beginning of the administration, well before a negotiated uh, bipartisan bill. Former President Clinton actually referred to Lake and Riley Sunday, campaigning for you in Georgia, saying if those men had been properly vetted, Lake and Riley probably would not have been killed. So if it wouldn't have happened, this is well before any negotiation. This is well before Donald Trump got involved in the politics. This is a specific policy decision by your administration to release these men into the country. So what I'm saying I, to you, no, do you no, no, owe Brett, those families I think it's really, I think an it, apology? Let me just say, first of all, those are tragic cases. There's no question about that. There is no question about that. And I can't imagine the pain that the families of those victims have experienced for a loss that should not have occurred. So that is true. It is also true that if a border security had actually been passed nine months ago, it would be nine months that we would have had more border agents at the border, more support for the folks who are working around the clock trying to hold it all together. Madam Vice President. To ensure that no future harm would occur. And this election in 20 days will determine whether we have a president of the United States who actually cares more about fixing a problem, even if it is not to their political advantage in an election, because there was a solution, Brett. Madam Vice President, it was a policy decision in the early part of your administration. I will let one of the mothers talk about it. Take a listen. Because of the Biden-Harris administration open border policies catch and release, they were enrolled in the Alternatives to Detention program. This meant that they were released into the United States. It was not even a full three weeks later that they would take my daughter Jocelyn Nungare's life. I believe the Biden-Harris administration open border policies are responsible for the death of my daughter. That's the early... Again, I don't care who's in office, Republican, Democrat, Independent, I don't care. There's a problem. Why have we let it get this way for decades? Other countries do not do this. Other countries will, will throw you in jail or execute you. We need a wall. We need the military. Maybe they need to come up with something like border military. Yeah, border military. Not just a bunch of uh, police officers, border patrol, but border military. We don't need a policy. It's common sense. Protect America. Period. Days. So do you owe them an apology is what I I'm saying. I will tell you that I am so sorry for her loss. I am so sorry for her loss. Sincerely. But let's talk about what is happening. That's not an apology. She's just saying, I'm sorry for your loss. She's not saying, I'm sorry that we are incompetent morons that allowed this to happen. Because I honestly, guys, I don't think they care. If they did care, the people that we elect in office cared. That look, it's our fault. It's it's the American people's fault. We're the ones that should be standing up going, do something about this now. Forget this, uh, we need to pass a bill, and then you put a bunch of stupid crap in it that has nothing to do with the border. We all know that you do that. Stop it. Get the military down there. Restructure the border patrol. Train them to be militant, militant, military. Look, they're dealing with cartels. They're dealing with terrorists. They're dealing with traffickers. Trafficking people, trafficking drugs, trafficking probably ammo, weapons. 
And you expect the Border Patrol, well, let's give them a little more money, you know. No, that's not going to solve the problem. You need a force to be reckoned with on the border. And the American people need to shout, shout from the mountaintops, do this, get this done. Right now with an individual who does not want to participate in solutions. Let's talk about that as well. But do you Brett, want to in, answer in all fairness, I told you, I feel awful for what she and her family have experienced. It's not an apology. During that time, you said repeatedly that the border was secure. When in your mind did it start becoming a crisis? I think it, we've had a broken immigration system transcending, by the way, Donald Trump's administration even before. Let's, let's all be honest about that. I have no pride in saying that this is a perfect immigration system. I've been clear, I think we all are, that it needs to be fixed. We need more, I was just down at the border talking with border agents and they will tell you, and I'm sure you probably, I know you investigate and you are a, a serious journalist. They will tell you, we need more judges. We need to process, we need to process those cases faster. We need the support for those cases that should be prosecuted. They need more resources, and Congress ultimately is the only place that that's going to get fixed, Brett. Well, that's how this system that's, works. That's the premise that's, of this question. But there that's were 90-plus executive orders that were rescinded in the first days. Many of those were Trump border policies. I'm not going to stay here because there's other things to talk about, but you frequently talk to the Border Patrol Union for support of that bipartisan. I wish they would have. I wish they would have because, because well, they're, they're pressed for time. It's a 25-minute interview because they did away with the policies that the Trump administration put up to secure the border. Again, I don't even think they need to go with policy. They need to go, hey, you're the president. Hey, I am chief head honcho el commando. Get the military on the border. I'm, I'm throwing out an executive order. We need to save the country. And you know what? Ain't n nobody would, would stop them. They'd be like, yeah, let's go. Let's do this. Let's finish the wall. Let's put guards up. Let's put towers up all the way down. Yeah, it's a big undertaking, but it can be done. And we're just wasting time and them in Congress, in the House, and doing all of this, dragging their feet. And, oh, no, we've got to shut down the, the government. We may have a shutdown because we don't have any money. It's annoying. Bill and they did. They supported it. But they also just endorsed Donald Trump and said, you've been, quote, a failure with border security. Why do you think they said that? I oh. think they're frustrated. And I get it. They want support. They want support. And that's what that border security bill would have done. These guys down at the border, these men and women, they're working hard. They're working around the clock. I get it. There's a lot of people that look back at what you said in 2019 when you first ran for president. Uh, and there have been changes, and you've talked about some of them. When it comes to immigration, you supported allowing immigrants in the country illegally to apply for driver's license, to qualify for free tuition at universities, to be enrolled in free health care. Do you su still support those things? Listen, that was five years ago, and I'm very clear that I will follow the law. I have made that statement over and over again, and as Vice President of the United States, that's exactly what I've done, not to mention before. You, if that's the case, you chose a running mate, Tim Walz, who, governor of Minnesota, who signed those very things into state law. So do you support that? We are very clear, and I am very clear, as is Tim Walz, that we must support and enforce federal law, and that is exactly what we will do. So decriminalizing border crossings, like you said in 2019. I, I do not believe in decriminalizing border crossings, and I've not done that as vice president, I will not do that as president. So these are evolutions I, and, and, that but, you've had. No, but let's be very clear. I'm the only person who's running for president who has prosecuted transnational criminal organizations from the Sinaloa cartel to the Guadalajara quota cartel, to people who have trafficked in guns, drugs, and human beings. I have spent 
a significant part of my career going after people who present a threat to the safety of the American people and, and cross our border with the intent of doing us harm and cross our border illegally. And I will do that work as vice president. I take that work quite seriously. This is a time when voters, especially here in Pennsylvania, are inundated with commercials and ads. They just want it to stop because it's every commercial. But many of them add noise, but a few of them seem to break through. This particular one from the Trump campaign has gotten a lot of attention. Kamala supports taxpayer-funded sex changes for prisoners. Surgery. Um, for prisoners. For prisoners. Every transgender inmate in the prison system would have access. So are you still in support of using taxpayer dollars to help prison inmates or detained illegal aliens to transition to another gender? I will follow the law. And it's a law that Donald Trump actually followed. Um, you're probably familiar with, now it's a public report, that under Donald Trump's administration, these uh, surgeries were available to, on a medical necess necessity basis, to people in the federal prison system. And I think, frankly, that ad from the Trump campaign is a little bit of like throwing, you know, stones when you're living in a glass house. The Trump aides say that he never advocated for that prison policy and no gender transition well, surgeries happened during his Well, you know what, you gotta take responsible his, for what happened presidency. in your administration. Yeah, no surgeries happened in his pregnancy. It's, it's in so black and white. would you still advocate for using taxpayer dollars for gender reassignment surgeries? I will surgeries? follow the law, just as I, I, I think Donald Trump as, would say he did. You would have a say as president. I, like I said, I think it's real. He spent $20 million on those ads trying to create a sense of fear in the voters because he actually has no plan in this election that is about focusing on the needs of the American people. Whereas, at $20 million on that ad, on an issue that, as it relates to the biggest issues that affect the American people, it's really quite remote. And again, his policy was no different. Look at where we are, though. They on say plans for the American we'll people, I'm offering a plan to deal with affordable housing. Oh, my God. What does she have? Affordable housing? She says she's going to do something with the border, but they have to pass a bill? She, she never answered the question. Do are you still going to support taxpayer funded gender reassignment surgery for criminals which is stupid she never answered it all she could say was I'm just going to follow the law so basically she's saying well if the law passes we'll just have to go with it we'll go with the flow the law passed where uh Tampon Tim, put tampons in boys' bathrooms. I, she, all she could do was bring up Trump. Trump spent $20 million on that ad. Well, is it true or not? Are you still going to support that? You just told some transition guy, yeah, everybody's going to get an opportunity even if they're in prison. Let's take the prisoners. Which is absurd. What are we in? The damn twilight zone? You're going to take taxpayer money because some idiot says he's he wants to be a woman? <laughs> so he could think he could have a better... Especially, what if he's serving life? It's just ridiculous. Why are we even having this conversation? I'm offering a plan to deal with what we need to do to strengthen small businesses, which are the backbone of America's economy. I am offering a plan that is about taking care of young parents and giving them the support they need. My plans for the economy will strengthen the economy, as have been reviewed by 16 Nobel laureates, uh, Goldman Sachs, Moody's, and recently the Wall Street Journal, which have all studied our plans and have indicated my plans for our economy would strengthen our economy, his would make them weaker. Why do you would think ignite more people inflation say, and invite a recession by the middle of next year. Those you, are the facts. Why do you think more people say they trust him on the economy than they... He's going to ask her why did he think uh, trust 
they trust Trump on the economy than her. Because the economy is a dumpster fire under the Biden administration. Under their administration. Trump does have a proven track record. Guys, things were good during Trump. Whether you, whether you like him or not. Look, we don't have a perfect person to run on the Republican ticket to represent uh, it, it represent the Christians of America. Christians, you you need to get out and vote. You do. If you want to look at it is what's the lesser of the two evils, but I don't even think it's that. Now, I don't agree on Trump. We don't we've, we we don't have a guy running who's against abortion period. And he should be. He should be. But there's no perfect man. Only Jesus Christ was the perfect man. So guys, do you want them to continue to put tampons in boys' bathrooms to transition prisoners, murderers, into another sex? With taxpayer-funded money. Continue to have the border run rampant. Continue to downgrade the educational system and put in their propaganda and to try to change history. To make children not even teach them about history. Or teach them to hate America through their propaganda. Do you see other countries doing this with their children? Maybe some of them, yeah. I think they are dumbing down the education in some of the places. This is happening in a lot of places, yes. Destroy our economy over global warming? This is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. I'll say real quick, if we come up with a better source of energy, I'd say let's go for it. But there's not. We have to rely on fossil fuels. And it's ridiculous to think that man is creating any kind of problems when we've had, before the combustible engine, we we had the Ice Age. We had global problems before man had, was burning fossil fuels. So I, I'm not buying this crap. I trust you. I think that when you look at an analysis of our plans for what we would do as President of the United States, it has been clear to those who study and understand how economic policy works that moving forward, because I do believe the American people are ready to turn the page on the divisiveness and the, the type of rhetoric that has come out of Donald Trump, people are ready to chart a new way forward, and they want a president who has a plan for the future and a plan that is sound and will strengthen our country. My plan for the economy does exactly that. His plan would be again to give tax cuts to billionaires and the biggest corporations in our country and blow up our deficit. It's interesting you said turn the page, Madam Vice President. You were asked on two different shows last week what, if anything, you would do differently than President Biden. Here's yeah. Before she answers that question, <clears throat> I think there's been a bunch of propaganda for a long time, a decade or more. And I noticed it. I noticed it probably about 10 years ago. I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I noticed that there was a propaganda in shows, all, all kinds of things, even music, to uh, have a disdain for the wealthy. To have some kind of jealousy, to stain, uh, they just own everything, and we have nothing. I, I think it planted the seed for a socialism viewpoint, a social communism type of viewpoint, and I was noticing this uh, several years ago. And I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, well, you know, what's going on with this? You know, why Why are people envious of somebody who has been successful? Somebody was telling me that they were upset with, with now this was, like I said, this was several years ago. 
Uh, maybe not quite a decade, but getting there because I, I am getting old and time does fly by fast. But Amazon, let's say they're going to build another uh, fulfillment center. Okay. So they they scout around to all the different states. What is going to be the best place for them to build the center? So this one particular state gives them the best offers. Like they, they, they get offers, they get offers, they get offers, and then they take the best one. Because guess what? That state, that city wanted them there to provide jobs. A thousand jobs. They run 24 hours a day. Non-stop, except I think on Christmas and maybe Thanksgiving. Anyway, it's it's 24-7. So you're talking uh, people coming and going, you know, working 10-hour shifts. Then another shift comes in. You know, maybe they hire a 1,000 people. So, yeah, they're going to get a tax break to build. For a, maybe a decade, they get a, they get a tax break for a decade. A lot of people were pissed about that. And I'm like, why are you mad about this? You work there. You have a job. You're providing for your family, and and they provided you with insurance. And you get vacation. You get time off. You get personal time. What is the problem? I had this conversation with somebody. Like, why are you angry at the city or at at Amazon? Because they get, I'm just using Amazon as an example. This happens with a lot of different companies. Why would a company want to build New York? The, the regulations are through the roof. It's going to cost a company a fortune. But guess who it hurts? Because of government and city regulations run by liberal Democrats, it hurts the people. Because now, because, uh, well, y'all remember several years ago, Walmart was going to build a super center or whatever it was in New York. And and Walmart, and Walmart New York was like, oh, blah, 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 blah. You know, you're going to have to pay this. You're going to have to pay that. You're going to have to pay this. They're like, no, we're not building here. Bye. See ya. Who did it hurt? It hurt the community. It just annoys me that... Look, I'm not an advocate for for super duper whatever businesses. But the thing is, if you break it down and look... Because look, we all know Amazon, Kmart went away. Sears is gone. But it's evolution. Are we kind of disappointed? Yes. The mom and pop shops. Because it's so easy for people to just pick up their phone, get on their computer and order crap off Amazon. Every year, more and more people switch. More and more people get confident using their credit card, using their bank card, whatever it is, to pay for the crap electronically on Amazon. It's evolution. Like the horse and buggy went away because there's cars. You the, people don't we don't have horses like we used to. It's evolution. But what but What do you do? Stop being envious about rich people and stop being mad because Trump wants to give these people incentives because they're, they'll build companies in America and create jobs. If they weren't billionaires, they wouldn't be able to build crap. So why are you mad? You're going to give these people, because guess what? Because of government regulations, this is why they leave the country and go build their factory somewhere else. Stop with the government regulations. Stop with taxing the crap out of them. Anybody go and apply for a business license. Go to New York and see how it is. See how many hoops you've got to jump through just to start a business. 
Imagine if you're a big business in New York, I'm using New York as an example, they're not going to give you the tax breaks. They're not going to cut you a deal. But other southern states will. Because they want the economic growth. They want their citizens and those cities and states to get a job. Stop with the with the with the rich envy. There's a reason why they need a tax break. I don't care if they're billionaires. It takes billionaires to build things to create jobs, people. What you said. Would you have done something differently than President Biden during the past four years? Uh, there is not a thing that comes to mind in terms of, and I've been a part of, of, of most of the decisions that have had impact. Under a Harris administration, what would the major changes be and what would stay the same? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm obviously not Joe Biden. Um, I know. And so yes. that would be one change. Yes. In terms of, that's not even funny. But also, it, I think it's important to say with, you know, 28 days to go, I'm not Donald Trump. So you're not Joe Biden, you're not Donald Trump, but, but nothing comes to mind that you would do differently? Let me be very clear. My presidency will not be a continuation of Joe Biden's presidency. And like every new president that comes in to office, I will bring my life experiences, my professional experiences, and fresh and new ideas. I represent a new generation. Her life experiences. Now remember, she, she grew up in a lower middle class family, people, which is not true. Generation of leadership. I, for example, am someone who has not spent the majority of my career in Washington, D.C. I invite ideas, whether it be from the Republicans who are supporting me, who are, were just on stage with me minutes ago, and the business sector, and others who can contribute to the decisions that I make about, for example, my plan for increasing the supply of housing in America and bringing down the cost of housing, addressing the issue of small businesses, which is about working with the private sector to bring more capital and access to capital to our small business leaders, including my plan mm -hmm. for a 25 thousand dollar down payment assistance for first time home buyers we've, and for small businesses extending the tax deduction from five thousand dollars to fifty thousand we've heard a lot about those plans in now i think that might be a mistake people y'all remember what happened with the housing bubble it's because the liberals created this plan to give people loans that had no way to pay them back and it caused a lot of problems. So she's saying she's going to give first-time home buyers, but there has to be a criteria before you give somebody a loan. How are they going to pay it back? Pay that back? Pay, pay the house? They got to make their house payment. They got to pay the taxes at the end of the year. They got to have all of this stuff is going to cost a fortune. And depending on what part of the country they're going to buy a house. There has to be a criteria of who whoever's going to buy a house. Do they meet the standards so they could pay it back? Now, before, they, they didn't. They were just handing this stuff out like candy. And then, and then it caused a big problem. So I'm curious to see a little more detail. And I, I apologize. I don't know the details of her policy. Who, who is she going to give this $25,000 to? Anybody? Or is it somebody who has a stable job and makes a certain amount of money a year? You see what I'm saying? There's always a catch-22. In, in recent days, your campaign slogan is a new way forward, and it's time to turn the page. You've been vice president for three and a half years, so what are you turning the page from? Well, first of all, turning the page from the last decade in which we've been burdened with the kind of rhetoric coming from Donald Trump that has been designed and implemented to divide our country and have Americans literally point fingers at each other. Rhetoric and an approach to leadership that suggests that the strength of a leader is based on who you beat down instead of what we all know. The strength of leadership is based on who you lift up. You, the strength of an Vice American president. president, which is one who understands that the vast majority of us 
have more in common than what separates us. Madam that Vice is President, more than 70 percent of people That is about pollsters. turning the page on rhetoric that people are frankly exhausted of, Brett. More than 70 percent of people tell the country is on the wrong track. That is a dumb explanation for turning the page. Okay. It's rhetoric. We need to turn the page. It's Donald Trump's fault. We're pointing the finger at each other. Guys, who's behind BLM? Libs. Liberals. Who during Obama's administration? <clears throat> I noticed during Obama's administration, we were more split. It seemed like, actually, we weren't. But in the media's eye and the propaganda, we were. If that makes any sense. The media and the propaganda, the, 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 the left, all the left-leaning news outlets, all of a sudden bashing white police officers, there was such an uprise in how they cherry-picked police incidents during Obama's administration. Think back on it because you didn't hear all this crap prior to that. This was probably happening way before then. But they cherry-picked them. Cherry-picked them. But there's incidents happening every day all over the country with black on black police officers on black criminals or black police officers on white criminals and vice versa. This happens every day. But the, but the media cherry picked to plant seeds of doubt in our police force. Even Obama stomping wanted something to alluding to the effect of some kind of brown shirt uh, yeah during Hitler's uh, they had brown shirts for a police force like Obama was suggesting that they needed to have a whole nother type of police force go look it up I was like whoa how is this guy going to get elected he said he wants government controlled police force across the whole country <laughs> That's insane. That's insane. Now, some people might go, well, that might be a good idea. But everything the government touches is a dumpster fire. We do not want that. Each city gets to elect their own police chief. Now, he can come in there and, 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 and mix things up if he needs to. Guys, you need to keep things on a local level so you have a say. Track. They say the country is on the wrong track. If it's on the wrong track, that track follows three and a half years of you being Ooh. vice president and President Biden being president. That is what they're saying, 79% of them. Why are they saying that? If you're turning the page, you've been in office for three and a half years. And Donald Trump has been running for office. But you've been the person holding oh my the God. office. Come on. You vice and I president. both know what I'm talking about. You and I both know what I'm talking about. Actually... Donald Trump has been running for office. Oh, my God. Don, uh, what are you talking about? What I'm talking about is that over the last decade, but people have become... But listen, over the last decade, it is clear to me, and certainly the Republicans who are on stage with me, the, the, the former chief of staff to the president, Donald Trump, uh, former defense secretaries, national security advisor, and his vice president. One, that he is unfit to serve, that he is unstable, that he is dangerous, and that people are exhausted with someone who professes to be a leader who spends full time demeaning and, and, and engaging in personal grievances and it being about him Madam instead vice of president, the American people. People are case, tired of that. If that's the case, why is half the country supporting him? Why is he beating you in a lot of swing states? Why, if he's as bad as you say, that half of this country is now supporting this person who could be the 47th president of the United States? Why is that happening? 
This is an election for President of the United States. It's not supposed to be easy. I know, but it's if not it's supposed as... to be. It, 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 it is not supposed to be a so cakewalk for So are they misguided, the 50 percent? Are they I'm, stupid? What, oh, what God, is it? I would never say that about the American people. And in fact, if you listen to Donald Trump, if you watch any of his rallies, he's the one who tends to demean and belittle and diminish the American people. He's the one who talks about an enemy within, within an enemy within, talking about the American people suggesting he would turn the American military on the American people. We asked that the, question to the former president today. Harris Faulkner had a, a town hall, and this is how he responded. I heard about that. They, they were saying I was, like, threatening. I'm not threatening anybody. They're the ones doing the threatening. They do phony investigations. I've been investigated more than Alphonse Capone. He was the greatest. <laughs> no, it's true. We no, but think of it. It's called weaponization of government. It's a terrible thing. So, but I, I'm sorry, and with all due respect, that clip was not what he has been saying about the enemy within that he has repeated. I'm a. I'm gonna agree. Now I don't know. I've never heard Trump say that. Say those exact words. But there is an enemy within, and it's the liberal Democrat. Woke agenda, a border agenda, remake America, move forward agenda. That they are the enemy within. They are transforming. Obama started it. She is just a reflection and a shadow of Obama. She says the same crap he did. I hope you older folks, the younger people are not going to remember. She sounds like him. We're going to move forward. We're going to turn the page. We don't want to go back. No, we don't want to go back. We want to move forward. Oh, those, those white forefathers, they were all racist. But not, not to say, well, they were geniuses. Creating a constitution for the people, by the people, which the liberals think it's restraining to them. It's holding them back. Lurch Carey came out and said, hey, hey, and she said it too. We need to, we need to uh, monitor and make sure that there's not false information getting out. Well, who's going to do that? Who is going to be the truther police? Guys, this is dangerous stuff. And yes, this is the enemy within. Now, Trump didn't go on and on and say all oh, what I'm saying. I'm saying this. We have an infiltration of, of being destroyed from within. Redefining marriage. Having men play in women's sports. Tampon. Tim putting tampons in boys' bathrooms. Boys, this is in schools. Guys, people who are up in my age would like, oh, my God. Why are y'all not furious about this? It, remember when you were in school, would you not flip a lid like, are we in the twilight zone? Young men all of a sudden say, yeah, I think I'm a girl. And they, get, and they want to go into a girl's bathroom and Tim... Tampon Tim wants to put urinals in girls' bathrooms? She goes on to say in a little bit that, uh, well, I think she had already said it. Like, this is uh, when they were talking about the transgender crap. But she says, well, there's more important things for us to be talking about. That is important. Because you are transforming America. And that's what Obama wanted to do. We're going to move forward. We're not going back. We're going forward. When he's speaking about the American people, that's not what you just showed. Well, he was asked no, about that no, specific... No, no, that's not what you just showed in all no, fairness no, no. and I'm respect you to you. I'm telling you that was the question that we asked him. Uh, you didn't show that, and here's the bottom line. He has repeated it many times, and you and I both know that. And you and I both know that he has talked about turning the American military on the American people. He has talked about going after people who are engaged in peaceful protest. He has talked about locking people up because they... Peaceful protests. Remember how they were saying it was peaceful protests during all those riots? The news reporters like, yeah, it's just a peaceful protest. 
The city's burning behind them. Hours later, days later. BLM. No, they're just peaceful protesters wanting a better way. Yeah. These people were bust in. Who the hell's going to burn their own city down and their own businesses in their community? Let's get real here. And I don't think this is a conspiracy. If there's anybody out there watching this that were in any of those cities in the past that got rioted because of some police officer, there was an incident with a white police officer and a black teenager or just a black male, and all of a sudden all these riots in the cities are being burned. Most of them that were arrested, they were from other cities. They were bust in and paid. You think that's far-fetched? Go research it. It's something that the, the, the mainstream media did not ever, ever talk about. Never. They disagree with him. This is a democracy. And in, in a democracy, the president of the United States, in the United States of America, should be willing to be able to handle criticism without saying he'd lock people up for doing it. And this is what is at stake, which is why you have someone like the former chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff saying what Mark Milley has said about Donald Trump being a threat to the United States of America. He's quoted in the Bob Woodward book that way, yes. L let me ask you this, no, Madam no, Vice no. President. Uh, look, they, they went after him with everything. I, they threw everything in the kitchen sink at Trump to get him out of the race, people. Rush Limbaugh used to say, whoever the liberals in the media and politicians attack the most, they're the ones they fear. They fear that person. And it made sense to me when he said that. Because it's like, how vicious, vicious they have gone after Trump. Comparing him to Hitler, even making posters. Putting it on magazines that his face and, and Hitler's face, opposites of each other. Or he just wants to become a dictator. And people are believing this stuff. It's amazing. It's all propaganda. Whoever they attack the most, they fear the most. And who have they attacked like we've never seen in my lifetime? First president I got to vote for, I probably could figure out my age by this, is that Reagan's second term, I was old enough to vote. Okay. Never seen it. Never seen him go after him with the law, the courts, to try to shut him down, to silence him, to make him move on so they can win and keep the office. I've never seen it. Never seen it in my lifetime. So you should know that they fear him. And there's a reason why they fear him. Because he's going to change stuff that they've tried to create so we can move forward. We're not going back. We're going to move forward. We're going to turn the page. We're going to transform America into something that's unrecognizable. They're killing us with the woke agenda, the, the border, uh, catch and release, smacking people on the wrist. All, all those stores that shut down. Have we have y'all fell asleep? Don't forget, San Francisco, the whole downtown area is pretty much shut down. Stores have moved out. Look what's happening in New York. We have gang problems. All of these problems pile up on top of pile up. And it's because of them. Because they want to transform America. They want it to implode so they can replace it with something else. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure this out. It's just sped up a lot faster than I ever thought it would.
I mean, this is, I, I like I said, I think I'm in the twilight zone. I get up and I'm seeing that you're wanting, you're letting boys in a girl's bathroom. You're letting a guy go swim on a girl's Olympic team. But you call let's not Donald Trump. The significance you, you, you of that. You call Donald Trump. Um, he's misguided. You say now he's he unstable. Is unstable. He is unstable. Brad. Uh, he's not well. well. You say he's it, mentally not stable. Uh, he's not stable. Let me ask you this. And, you and told many interviewers that Joe Biden was on his game, that ran around circles on his staff. When did you first notice that President Biden's mental faculties appeared diminished? Joe Biden. I have watched in from the Oval Office to the Situation Room, and he has the judgment and the experiment and experience to do exactly what he has done in making very important decisions on behalf of the American people. There Joe Biden, no concerns raised. Brett, Joe Biden is not on the ballot. I understand. And but, Donald Trump, Donald Trump but is. But you talked about it. And Donald Trump after is. After George Clooney said and within a few minutes of talking to Donald President Biden Trump, at a fundraiser that he thought Brett, this was not the Brett, same Joe Biden. That we saw on the Donald debate stage. Donald Trump is on the ballot. Oh, good Lord. George Clooney said it so. Oh, man. Well, George Clooney said that uh, he's just not the same. You know why they had to come out and say that? Because during the debate, it was clear. And plus, there were signs of it before. There's nothing to see here, people. Don't rely on your own eyes. We were seeing it prior to that. He was bumbling and stumbling in speeches prior. He was falling down. <clears throat> the guy takes more vacations than I think in any other president in history. And she was she is saying that that Trump is mentally unstable. That's just disingenuous. I'm sorry. I talk about policies. Talk about policies. It, that's what Trump does. Does he throw in some humor? Yes, he does. He gets some zingers in there. Tampon Tim is is brilliant. Word salad Kamala Harris is brilliant. Y'all just leave it too easy. It's too easy. But to say that the man is unstable is disingenuous because he's not. Biden could not could not do any of the rallies, all the interviews that Trump has been doing. It's insane. You can't even compare the two. Now, I would never make fun of somebody who has some kind of mental uh, breakdown, whether he's got Alzheimer's or whatever is wrong with him. But something is clearly wrong with him. And guys, he hasn't been running the country. It's been her. Or somebody puppeteering her as well. There's somebody behind the curtain. There, and we, we don't know who we we're, People say it might be uh, Obama. I, I don't know. But how could this man, logically thinking, how could he be running one of the most powerful countries on the planet, which we should be the number one most powerful country on the planet. How, how is he doing this? When we saw him in the debate, we saw him fumble the interviews. How the hell? I don't, I don't get it. Understand, you met with him at least once a week for three and a half years. You didn't have any concerns? I think the American people have a concern about Donald Trump, which is why the people who know him best, including leaders of our national security community, have all spoken out, even people who worked for him in the Oval Office, worked with him in the Situation Room, and have said he is unfit and dangerous and should never be President of the United States again, including his former Vice President, which is why the job was open for him to choose another running mate. So that is a fact. That is a fact. Madam Vice President, two more things. You were asked on 60 Minutes about the biggest threat that the world faces, that the U.S. faces. This is what you said. Which foreign country do you consider to be our greatest adversary? I think there's a, an obvious um, one in mind, which is Iran. 
Iran has American blood on their hands, okay? The, this attack on Israel, 200 ballistic missiles, um, what we need to do to ensure that um, Iran never achieves the ability to be a nuclear power, that is one of my highest priorities. A number of extra experts thought you would say China. Um, the FBI director had said that. But you said Iran. If that's the case, what do you say to critics uh, who look at the actions of your administration and say you're not acting like Iran is the number one threat? Well, I, I will tell you most recently, whether it was in April or in October, in the s several hours on each occasion that Iran posed a threat to Israel. I was there, uh, most recently in the Situation Room, in the most recent attack, working with the heads of our military and doing what America must always do to defend and to support Israel in its requirement to defend itself and to give American support to be able to allow Israel to have the resources to defend itself against attack, including from Iran and Iran's terrorist proxies in the region. Right. And that but those is proxies and, were and funded my by commitment Iran. to that is unyielding and unwavering. Critics just say that you either relaxed or failed to, to enforce sanctions on Iran, allowing all of this money to flow let, into Iran, like let, billions of dollars. Let's in go back to Donald profits. Trump who, on, who pulled out of who pulled out of a deal that would have actually put but here Iran the, in check. The estimates and then in billions. It was during Donald Trump's that administration go the that Iran, Iran regime that, that we had a, an American military base that was attacked, where American soldiers suffered traumatic brain injuries, and Donald Trump dismissed them as headaches. Not to mention Madam how Vice Donald President, Trump has all of this money has treated and has talked about America's military years. and military service people Critics calling them that suckers Hezbollah, and losers, Hamas, has diminished and the significance. We're talking over each other. I apologize. Well, I, and I, um, and I, I, wish, I would like that we would have a, a conversation that is grounded in full assessment of the facts which includes, I think this interview is supposed to be about the choices that your viewers should be presented about this election, and the contrast is important. Yes, ma'am. Trump put sanctions on Iran. They were broke until Biden came along. That's fact. I, I wish the, uh, Brett Baer would have said something, but I know they're running out of time. On the subject of Iran, I am offering what should be an, an important contrast that is presented for folks to make a decision and there are that they feel. Critics who look at what the administration did and say and think differently, Madam Vice President, they're wrapping me very hard here. I hope you got to say what you wanted to say about Donald Trump. There are a lot of things There's that, more to say. I have there, much more there are to say, a lot actually. of things that people want to learn about you and your policies. Yes. And that's why I'm, we I invited invite you everyone here. to go to KamalaHarris.com and you will see that I have 80 uh, pages of policies that are quite comprehensive and should be um, accessible to anyone who would like to read them and it includes what I intend to do about affordable housing, what I intend to do about small businesses, what I do to And that's why we invited to you here, our economy, to see where you were in 2019 to, and to where you are now. America's military and ensure we have the most lethal and best fighting force in the world. Madam Vice President, and they're giving I, me a hard rap Well, here. I thank you for the time. I thank you for the time. It's good to meet you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Would you? Wow. Assessment. How can you blame? I guess you can. Obviously, blame Donald Trump. But then again, at some at the end of the day, no. You've been in there three years. Now you're telling us day one, you get in, you're going to make changes and wave a wand and everything's going to be hunky-dory. But you've been there three years. Why didn't you already do it? Why did you let Iran get, get powerful again? It's your fault.
There you have it. There you have it. You decide who you want to vote for. The the party of death? Abortion? Van? Mobile? Outside their DNC? The party of letting the floodgates open at the border? They've done nothing about it? They've... She's been running for a few months. She still hadn't stopped the border flow. Again, they could have sent military down there. Boom. Boom. Let's do this. No, they want to hire more judges to hurry up and fast track these people. You decide. <laughs>